everyone, what's up? It's Jen and we're here for a training video today. I'm going to be taking you through uh, a training session that I did and some cues and tips that I say to myself as well as when I am training people in person um, to get them to activate and feel the movement as they should. Um, sometimes just hearing it in a different way can be a huge ch game changer in your training. So while what I may have to say may not be revolutionary for you, um, maybe you already know it, um, maybe there's a chance that what I'm going to say is going to click for you and just have land on you in a different way. So let's get started. First tip that I always tell people when it comes to getting the glutes to activate is to determine for yourself whether or not you are anterior or posterior dominant. Majority of the, of the time when somebody is posterior dominant, we find um, as trainers usually that their back ends, posterior side of their body, um, tends to be what takes over more naturally. So when it comes to things like squat patterns, um, deadlifting, um, there's far more emphasis just naturally placed onto the back end of the body. But a lot of women, because of the way that our hips are developed, tend to be more anterior focused, so front side of the body. And if you think about like being pregnant and how you're carrying weight on the front side of your body, um, it's a very natural motion for most women typically um, to drive a lot of their force through the front side of their body. So for example, on a squat pattern, as opposed to somebody who's more posterior dominant, who would dig more naturally through their heels, a more anterior dominant trainee may drive more through their toes as opposed to their heels. So there's a very big difference between the two because if you drive through your toes, you're going to get more quad activation. And depending upon your biomechanics and any limitations that you have, the more you drive through your toes in an effort to get your back end to fire, you may find yourself with a lot of hip flexor issues, lower back issues, um, and your quads joining the party more than your backside. So that's the number one tip that I have. Um, and I'm also a really firm believer in working the body um, from the top to the bottom, not just one muscle group. Like I do specific glute training, glute hypertrophy training, obviously with my clients, but one of the things that I employ is a entire posterior chain or entire kinetic chain uh, recruitment style of training intertwined with their traditional training. Um, so I take a bit more of a hybrid approach. So I will talk about another video like volume and all that kind of jazz, but let's just focus on cues and tips for today. So the first exercise that you're going to see me do is a heel um, heel lifted goblet squat, but I'm actually not lifting my heel here because the shoes that I'm wearing have a natural lift in the back on them. They are Metcons and I prefer to train in Metcons because they allow me the athletic ability, but also to do lifts where um, I need to drive through my heels. When you're lifting, especially for your lower half, you want your shoe to maybe have a bit of a heel in the back, but be hard. So think more like Converse chucks um, and even like boots, like utility boots in a sense, because you want that really, really hard um, heel. You don't want a cushiony heel. Otherwise, you are going to be kind of absorbing all of the power through the cushion, not through driving up your heel. And that's what you really want to be doing. Plus, um, people tend to get injured when their shoes are softer on the back end and they're trying to do lifts. So, all right. Um, when I'm doing these goblet squats, I want you to pay attention to something um, that I'm doing here. And um, 
there's two things. The first thing that I am doing is as I'm coming up from my squat out of the bottom, you're going to notice from the side angle that I have a bit of like a curvature through like a concave through my lower back as opposed to an arch in my lower back. I have a bit of a concave. So it kind of looks a little bit like I'm hunching, but I'm not. My glutes are still really tight. I am in a full extension, except instead of bringing my chest up and back and arching, I'm a little bit more forward and I'm holding tight through my core while creating a little bit of this concave. Depending upon the movement and how you're feeling it, um, you may want to look at the way that you are doing your extension and whether or not you're placing any strain on your lower back as opposed to your glutes. So you want to keep it tight and you want to get that really hard extension. But unlike coming up from like, say, a powerlifting deadlift, where you really go tight and then you pull back, try angling it slightly different so there's a bit more of a concave. The second thing that I do on this movement, which is a squat pattern, and I do this with any type of squat pattern that I am doing or lunging pattern, except it would be more single leg that way, is that I always think as I'm coming up from my squat that I am zippering up the back of my hamstrings. So when I'm in like a sumo type or even any type of squat, even if it's more parallel, as I'm coming up from the bottom and even as I'm driving down, I'm thinking about being a zipper. And so that forces me to place my emphasis onto my back end because that's not necessarily natural for me. Um, I was a gymnast, so I am more anterior dominant, quad dominant, and I've had to train myself to be posterior dominant. So the zipper analogy of driving through my heels and zippering up or zippering down um, really helps me get that feeling of driving through my heels and coming up to my glutes as opposed to coming up and maybe placing an emphasis on my quads. Is know your hip, your hips and your, because they are a ball and socket joint, right? So everybody is going to have a very different stance with their hips and what I mean here is let's say you are hip thrusting, for example, whether it's body weight or it's with a barbell. Knowing your biomechanics of your hips is going to change your foot position um, as well as where your feet lie in accordance to your knees as well. Like this is a great example of this would be hip thrust. Squats are definitely this way. Um, and in fact, if your squat pattern, you've learned that you have to have a specific stance for squats, you may actually find that that transfers to your hip thrusts as well. Um, and it has to do with the pelvis and the hips and that ball and socket joint and how everybody's hip biomechanics really are very, very individual. So, you know, I could have three people lined up and they're all going to have a slightly different stance with their toes and their feet and their heels when they're hip thrusting that they're going to be able to feel primarily their glutes without feeling other things. Say for you when it comes to glute training is really work on figuring out, especially when it's like hip thrusting um, or bridging, figuring out where your toes go in relation to your hips and that can be the same even on your goblet squats so for me um instead of going 
parallel, you go a little bit out this way instead. Um, or I do. Anyways, I have to. That's just my hip biomechanics. So anyways, I hope you enjoy the training session. I hope you got some value out of this. If you are thinking about the zipper on lunge patterns, think of it more as driving through your heel and zipping up with one side, but the whole premise of it is the same. So I hope these helped. These are just a few of my tips and tricks. Um, enjoy the workout. Let me know how it goes. And until next time, bye guys.